10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Drag Racing fan, Competition Plus, Power Hour, live right now. And what a great episode I think we do have in store for us tonight. Yes, later on, we do plan on having John Force. And John Force alone, you need no one else when you have the GOAT buying on the show. Looking forward to talking to him. And I'm sure myself, the Monday Morning Racer, and my co-host, Slamming Sam, we're going to have a lot of good things to talk with John about, and more than just recent happenings on the NHRA tour. Sam, how you doing tonight? Come on, Lee. That's not what you want to talk about. I mean, that should be the only thing you want to talk about, right, Lee? Actually, honestly, I mean... uh, no, man. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sh- I want to get those thoughts from John and get the insider thoughts, but. I want to know stuff from Australia, for example. We didn't really get to dive into that last time. I want to know stuff. Wait, time out. Hey, Lee, time out. Wait a minute. Yeah. Dan's already in the comments. So, Both. all right. There we go. What's up, Drag Racing fans? We got everything figured out. I'm slamming Sam because they don't have my name under here anymore. Don't know why. That's Lee, the Monday Morning Racer, Competition Plus Power Hour. But before we go any further, You guys need to like and share this. Like and share it. Let's get the word. In the words of Wes Buck, let's keep spreading the gospel of drag racing. Uh, Let's talk motorsports, whatever we may dive into tonight. Because if you watched the previous episode with this guy, John Forrest, we talk about three things that Lee likes to mention. But please like, share, comment, subscribe, Monday Morning Racer, Slamming, I mean, Outlaw Performance, ENT. Your host, Slam and Sam, and Competition Plus. So, if you're on YouTube, you should already be subscribed to all three of those channels. That's right. That's right. Well, Sam, before we have John come on later around 930, hopefully we do have our Pit Insider coming on as well, Jeff Ferrand. No. No. Jeff is not coming on tonight. Jeff is not coming on tonight. No. He had his teeth pulled. And he still has got some pain. He sent me a text earlier. I should have, I guess, sent it to you. But yes, he, so our best wishes to you, Mr. Jeff Arend, our pit insider. I hope you get well soon. Uh, Use your Coors Light to ice your side of your face, whichever side it's on. So use those Coors Light bottles. It's easy, right? Like once the mountains aren't blue, then you get another one. That's right. And hopefully you have some whiskey to make that feel all better, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if he has to lay off the Coors Light due to it, you know, affecting the tooth surgery or something there. I, 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 I'd hate that for him. He's, he's Canadian. There's no way he's laying off. There's no way. So, yes, thank you to you guys out there. Uh, we got an update. Bobby will be in the studio shortly. Oh, So is this a, like, he's coming on to give us some insight, or is he coming on to, like, rant and rave? Don't know. I don't know. Never can tell with Bobby. You you never know where this show is going to go, especially if you have Bobby Bennett and John Force on the same night. But, hey, Lee, I kept the 22 on the hat tonight, so John knows, like, you know, where we're going. Who we are. Who we are. Yeah. Because I'm Amish, Monday morning racer, and you're a 22. Yeah. But, hey. Scott brought up something, and we, so we might as well dive into stuff. It's been like the news that everyone should talk about, right? The pro mod rule change, maybe the boycott of uh, Brainerd, which I would hate to see because that's right down the road from my house, so don't do that. But what do you think about that? Like, I, I haven't dove all into it and got everything, um, but I know on the show right before the Caruso's, you know, I caught a bit of their show and they were talking about it there with Wes Buck. But what do you what do you think about the rule change and everything else? Well, Sam, honestly, I don't know what to think. I haven't heard what the rule change is. I was more concerned. Well, when I say more concerned, I didn't know there was an announcement. But I'm looking at, well, the Menards NHRA 
Nationals presented by Pet Armor this weekend. You got the PDRA Northern Nationals, first time they're going to be at Maple Grove, and also the 50th annual Night Fire Nationals wrapped up from Firebird Raceway there in Boise, Idaho, north of it. But certainly, let's talk Pro Mod. Inform me, inform everyone else who might not know of uh, the rule change. Well, I'm going to bring in our pit insider for tonight, and he can dive right into it. And without further ado, Mr. Bobby Bennett. Bobby! (laughs) You even got me wondering now because uh, (laughs) I've I've been editing film all day today. Dude, I've been in the... uh, I've been in a dungeon here working on uh, three episodes of Legends the Series. Uh, I have just uh, finished the first draft of the Kenny Bernstein, uh, you know, the King of Speed. I don't know what this is behind me, but anyway. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, uh, working on Kenny Bernstein, Billy Meyer, and Ed the Ace McCullough, the redo. And uh, what happened is when we did the uh, Ed McCullough in uh, season two is that we had permission from a filmmaker to use footage from his movie. And then all of a sudden he decided he wasn't going to let us use it. Well, too late. We'd already done it. So we had to pull it. Plus, you know what? I've advanced quite a bit as a filmmaker since then. So I just I went to Fresno. Uh, talked with Ace, and that will be coming soon. Uh, plus, we'll be dropping a new episode of Storytellers tomorrow with Kenny Bernstein, the King of Speed, and Waco Willie Billy Meyer talking about the great roof swap from the 1981 Winter Nationals uh, when uh, Raymond Beetle's uh, Mopar came out a hard top and Return to the pits as a convertible. And, well, they did some early plastic surgery. So so tell me about the rule change here, and I'll tell you about probably how stupid it is. I am, like, literally hey, just finding hey, out about it we, before the show. Lee. We, we all need to take a drink on that one. You can't hide that one, Sam. <laughs> all right. What Bobby, yes. Bobby, come on. Yeah. You don't know the rules? I didn't hit mute, did I? I no, did. No, yeah. Oh, you did. did. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, everybody out there. Hey, dude. I know I couldn't make a rookie mistake like that. I got my Dale Poldy War Eagle <laughs> Miller High Life Warrior shirt on. That's a cool shirt. I, uh, and it's a true story. I was telling somebody that I weighed, I bought this shirt. I found it on eBay because I kind of gave up on finding one like I had. I had purchased one in 1985, and it was like a teal kind of electric blue color, and it was just absolutely beautiful. Well, I wore the thing till it turned to dust. And, well, since then, I got a lot of gravitational pull. And, uh, well, I found found one on uh ebay and well when you're when you weigh 234 pounds and the shirt is on the smaller size of the xl chart it's just not a pretty sight so uh i put it away expecting never to uh to uh wear the thing and then i caught the chinese weapon of war and then i lost about 20 pounds in, in, in 11 days and then i tried it on and well it fit a bit snug but now today i weigh a hundred and i believe 193 pounds now so that puts me at 41 pounds lost i know how i lost the first 20 don't have a clue on the others but i'm not arguing it could be that i run two and a half miles every day fellas so you know i come in the morning i stop work on getting stories laid out ready to go and then I take off, and, and that's the time that I can just meditate. And uh, actually, I, I don't feel 54 years old when I'm running in the neighborhood. And let me tell you something. This is not a treadmill run. This is up hills, down hills. Uh, I, I'm, I'm huffing, puffing like a blower car up on Thunder Mountain up there in Denver. Well, man, look, we're glad that. Uh, you've you've been able to lose that weight, keep it off, and some more, and the health is improving. And 
uh, you're able to fit into a new T-shirt. Sam, tell us what rules the Pro Mod guys have got to fit into. There you go. Drink again. <laughs> That's twice in one night. Gosh. Here we go. My hand's just not quick enough. The guy that wears the big hat. Jeez. So there it is. Scott Milepass always comes in with it. Um, as I was saying, I was trying to get the info. So Pro Chargers cars are limited to using a 456 gear. Well, what did you expect? I mean... But the combination is going to run rampant. It, it, I, I can tell you from somebody who sat and watched Pro Modified. Now, my peers, the older peers, they got to watch uh, the the Pro Stock come into play. They got to watch funny cars develop. My funny cars and Pro Stock was Pro Mod, and, and it saddens me to say that I believe in another couple of years we won't see a conventional blower car or a nitrous car it will all become uh, uh you know pro charger and turbo charger sad 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 commentary that's what it's gonna be bet me nah bet what do you think i just i don't like seeing a non-nitrous field but i think it's i mean it's I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like you've seen it for so long and now it's just kind of slowly disappearing. So what are we going to do about it? See, see when, when pro mod started, you know, uh, of course the nitrous cars were, were in the majority and, and they ran, uh, you know, the quick eights in the Southeast there. You can say what you want to, but that's where it came to prominence because then that quick eight became a quick four and then a quick eight at IHRA events. They weren't having like these quick eights elsewhere. I mean, they probably were, but it wasn't like, uh, like the pro mod style. And, uh, I always tried to describe what pro modified was to somebody that didn't, didn't know about it, uh, more or less like, well, you got a band with uh, Hank Williams Jr. singing as the front man, and then you got Metallica in the back. You know, one being the nitrous cars with Hank, and uh, uh, Metallica is the blower car. So, and, and for a while there, that's what the calling card was, but then it just, I don't know. We tried to expand, and sometimes expanding isn't, isn't the right way. What do you think the issue is in particular with NHRA? Because we can see it in some other sanctioning bodies where the other types are still competitive. For example, in the Pro Stars with PDRA, you've got Jim Halsey, Brandon Schweitzer. They won that Pro Star nitrous versus, you know, boosted type of scenario. So what is it within NHRA that is giving so much win availability to well pro charged in the other type over nitrous right now well you know it, it, it's not and not to slight anybody in the nhra technical department because there's some very smart guys and, and they work hard and and they're a great group of people but i really 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 believe that you need somebody in there that's got experience running with just about all the combinations and, and i have been a lobby for it for years and maybe somebody will eventually listen to me, but I, I still believe the NHRA needs to hire Scotty Cannon to to be like the uh, liaison for the pro mods. I really do. That I think that would go a long way to uh, to to bringing uh, bringing more of a peaceful resolution to the class. That would be a fascinating move. I think that would be a great move, and you'd have an individual that was such an innovator. He'd probably be a step ahead of other people innovating when they brought it to the table. He's like, I was expecting you to bring that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I believe that Scotty Cannon, I think you need to go go, go into the roots, and, and, and Scotty's a guy that, one, 
uh, championships with both combinations. He won as a nitrous racer. He run, won as a blower racer. And for a while there, he even raced a turbo car. But, you know, I just, you know, the Brainerd thing, uh, you know, I know NHRA is trying to get into more markets, but I think at a time when, when the, uh, when the whole economy and the whole, uh, community's been devastated uh, by nobody's fault but I just I think that it probably would have been better to stick to close to home just my idea so what are your thoughts going Bobby, through on, what are your thoughts Bobby on Craig Sullivan coming out with the 49 Mercury and showing out you know first race winning and Again, that goes back to right now we're talking about what seems to be a very NHRA pro mod problem, whereas other groups, again, the PDRA is unique. They've separated the classes or the, the two combinations, boost and nitrous. But, yeah, old body, 49 Merc, blower, goes out and wins. Oh, yeah. Well, you can, you can think back to – you know, like 1990, uh, I believe it was 1997 when Johnny Rocca brought out the Iron Horse uh, 49 Mercury. And then to, to see this one with uh, Sullivan's car, I mean, it's just a throwback to what Pro Modified was and, and the excitement level that it brought brought out there. Uh, Pro Mod's always been kind of like a, a class that runs in cycles. Uh you know, and, and for people to say, oh, well, all the cars look alike and, you know, it's nothing but Camaros now. Well, I remember a time it was all 63 Corvettes and then it was all this uh, 93 Corvette ZR1s. I believe that was what it was. And, and then there were uh, it, it was just like that. Then the Camaros, then the Firebirds. And, and it just goes in cycles here. And. and when we see a car, uh, the likes of uh, Mr. Sullivan's, it's just so so refreshing. I mean, I had the pleasure to live in the days of the world's fastest group. And uh, for those that are not familiar, in uh, I would say it was 1988 and, and 1987 uh, when Pro Modified still wasn't a thing but we all knew it was going to be a thing. Uh, everybody had to have a hook. I had to have a uh, calling card in the top sportsman division for the quick eight. So, you know, just like Charles Carpenter had the world's fastest 55 Chevy, Gordy Faust had the world's fastest 66 Chevelle, uh, you know, and, and cars like that, or Scotty Cannon had a world's fastest 41 Willis. That was it's just a throwback to those days when, when, uh, when, when drivers use their car to have an identity. But I think we're starting to see a little bit more of that. I mean, when you say cars, uh, drivers use their car as I, uh, identification. I mean, you, you look at some of these cars, you know, for example, Salinas, he does something very unique and even, but their whole crew, you know, when they run that traditional, you know, matte black paint scheme, I mean, you know, it's, it's clean. Everyone knows who, you know, who they belong to. Or I think, you know, you self-identification, Antron Brown is very good at doing that. Um, someone who's kind of, yes, up in the air. A lot of things are being said right now. Who knows what's going on? But you have Alex Laughlin. He does a very good job at in whichever field he's going to be driving in here in the future uh looks like it's kind of going to be geared towards top fuel right now but there's a lot of them that do that um do you think we're taking that away with major sponsorships or do you think we can dial that back to certain things get back to you know lee and i have talked about it have a throwback weekend well well that that's true but there are so many things working against the throwback weekend uh, number one would be NHRA politics, and, and though I'm not, uh, you know, blaming NHRA for anything on that, I'm just saying that uh, 
you know, for instance, they've got to deal with main gate, you know, and, and what would be the one thing that the drivers could justify putting a new wrap on their car? Well, apparel sales, t-shirt sales. And I suggested to the NHRA for one race uh, that they just kind of suspend their program with main gate and let the drivers sell their t-shirts out of the back of the trailer. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things we got to give, we got to step outside of the norm if we want to have something that would be so freaking cool. I mean, even with our slot car series, you know, or, or no, let me go back. Let me backtrack, back it up. When we used to do the throwback showdown where we would, uh, we went to the top 10 guys and say, look, if you could run a throwback paint scheme, what would you run? And, uh, you know, number one was John Force, I think, at the time. And he says, I'd run the Wendy's Corvette. So there you go. Robert Height wanted to run the L.A. Hooker car. And, and of course, Jeff Deal ended up uh, beating, you know, putting a hurting on him because he chose Jungle Jim. And that's who he epitomized. And, and of course, you know, like Tim Wilkerson with the Chi-Town Hustler. And stuff like that. But to do this, number one, you've got to make this feasible for the racers to do that. And how do you do that? What's the one thing they can do without having to put sponsors all over the car? Sell themselves, sell their merchandise, sell their apparel. One race is not going to hurt. I think one race, uh, NHRA should waive whatever contracts they have in place and let the teams, you know, say, look, if you wrap your cars like that, we'll let you sell your uh, T-shirts and apparel out of the tra back of your trailer. If we're going to throw it back, let's throw it back. Don't do it half-ass. It's already been proven, whether it's stick and ball, NASCAR, whatever it is, that throwback weekends work. Except for my freaking Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Don't put them in those creamsicle orange jerseys again. <laughs> We're not going to talk about them on this show. Hey, see, I like this. We were we talking about some. I got news. We're not for talking you. about I'm them. Going to Kansas City, and I'm wearing my Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl champions. Hey, hey yeah. mute yeah. him, please. There mute him. Mute, mute him. Anyway, no, I like I this right here. I, Steve, I agree with you. I do believe that Doug Winters does have the most unique car in Pro Mod. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we can all agree with that. And then someone else here in the comments, and and Lee, I think you and I can chuckle out of this one. The Camaro is the fastest race car if you want to win. Point, you know, simple. But that's not true because if you look at the other style of racing, you see nothing but Mustangs. So I would like to see a lot more Mustangs out there. I mean, me personally. Well, it was, I know it, I'm biased. The early days of Pro Modified, there was a healthy mix between. Uh, classic and uh, you know and, and late model in fact you know uh, one of one of the more and, and it wasn't always a given of what the the late model car would look like I mean for instance the first supercharged car to ever qualify in pro modified was a, a I believe it was a 1988 uh, Monte Carlo Aero Coupe uh, driven by Stanley Barker and built by his brother, Wayne, who was actually a paraplegic. Just that, that was pretty neat. And then you could see like the, uh, over the hill gang, uh, Scott Shafroff, Gordy Meal, with the, with the firebird and then Bill Coolman, you know, he had his, his Beretta, you know, and, and, there were some really good things. And then you'd even see uh, Walter Henry with the, although Walter passed away uh, from an unfortunate crash uh, before Pro Modified became an official class, but he had what, a 1985, 86 Corvette, you know, supercharged car. But then you'd see somebody like, uh, you know, my, my mind, Scotty Cannon with the 1941 Willis or, or Kenneth Tripp with the Bad Medicine 1941 Willis, which was basically a carbon copy. Well, not so much a carbon copy because Quain Stott built Scotty Cannon's first car, and I believe it was the late Gary Hajek that built 
uh, Kenneth Tripp's car. So, you know, there was a healthy mix there. Right. Let me answer a very quick question. Diane Earnhardt, where is John Force? He actually is in studio, and he will be coming on. The way this show works, since you're new to it, is there's about 30 minutes talking about drag racing, latest news and opinion on it, and then we have our guests, and most of the time there's two guests on per night, but we've just got John on this show in particular, but thank you for watching. He will be coming up soon. Bobby, I want to transition, and I definitely want to talk about something that I feel – it gets overlooked in the world of drag racing because everybody wants to talk about camping world or NHRA, NHRA camping world, or even PDRA, the night fire nationals at firebird raceway, North of Boise, Idaho wrapped up this past weekend, 50 years. Talk to us about that. It's significance and why people should be paying attention about all these nostalgia cars and what they're doing in the world of drag racing. Well, well, you know, the thing is, is that uh, Brian Lostness, who is our uh, nostalgia correspondent, did a, a great, great job covering the event uh, from this past weekend. And, uh, you know, you can see on the screen there, that was a first round match between Jim Murphy, a, a decorated veteran who raced, you know, a funny car for many years and came back to get decorated in the nostalgia top fuel class racing against, uh, the third, uh, third generation Hilton, you know, I believe it, Tyler Hilton and, uh, you know, the, his dad was Bob, Bobby Hilton that drove the Jim and Allison Lee car. And, you know, to see the generations going back to what it is, I have all the respect in the world, uh, for the guys that drive those front engine dragsters and, and you know, the, even the, the nostalgia funny car class is making a, a, a comeback. I mean, it, it fell on some tough times there. I'm not a fan of the, uh, the sleek aerodynamic bodies. I believe that that style of racing should pick one era, uh, whether it be 76 or 77 and stick to those body styles only. But then again, I don't want to cheat those that love, funny car racing in 72 or 73. So, but uh, I, I'm not a fan of the aerodynamic funny cars because I think we're getting away from what it was. But it is a great series. I love going to Bakersfield. The March meet is epic, and so is the Hot Rod Reunion. All right. Let's see. Take that photo off in just a moment. There we go. Cool. So, guys. I have a question. It was posted on the Facebook page. It was meant to be asked for John, but I kind of really want to know you guys' opinion on it. So I'm just going to ask the question. I have my personal opinions on this, but here we go. Uh, it's from Richard R. I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name, but it says, ask him, meaning John Force, but I'm asking you guys how long he thinks auto manufacturers will stick around with all the electric billions being wasted on cars nobody wants. Oh, jeez. Here we go again. Oh, here, here exactly. we go hey, again. I here we go again. Whoa. Hey, wait. Wait your turn. Wait your turn, Bobby. Your guest tonight. <laughs> so, Lee, first, because we know it's going to take Bobby a little, a little bit of time to answer this question. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Like, do we see manufacturers stay around for a lot longer or do these electric guys get in and just try and steal the show? Manufacturers will do what they've always done. They'll get in and they'll accomplish what they want and they'll get out. You've seen it every time with manufacturers one way or the other. The racers have always had to take it upon themselves to continue racing. But I think greater than... The issue, the issue with electric racing, to me, is not the racing. It's everything behind the racing. Like, we really can't sustain an electric car world with our current infrastructure. It, you just, it, it cannot be done right now. And you run into the problem, if we're going to have a electric motorized, you know, electric, electrified vehicle world, at least in the United States of America, well, how are most of our power plants powered? 
you're still talking natural gas, oil, coal are the, the biggest parts of it. They don't want to do anything with nuclear anymore, even though it's clean and efficient. I just the, the issue with the racing, can it happen? Yes. I think it can open up new folks coming in. I think it can bring in manufacturing dollars, but it's going to be very limited and eventually they'll get out of it. The biggest problem with electric is not the racing, it's out in the world. That's the problem. I swear to gosh, Sam, you just do this to piss me off every time. Hey, Bobby, I'm learning something, and it's it's right there, okay? That's why I put it on there. I'm coming to the, the conclusion that we as fans, we as people, have to embrace the suck, okay? As, I mean, we saw it there in Pomona. We're seeing it more and more. I get it. I don't like it, but we have to make a stand and say, guess what? We're not going to put up with it for too long. We'll accept it, but we need, we need loud. We, we want that. That's why we go to the race. No offense, and I'm going to pull you guys all back up here, but no offense. Even when um, Tony Stewart did his burnout in the electric car, no lie, I'm taking pictures. Top of the racetrack. I'm like, and then I see the smoke. I'm like, oh, crap. So I pull up my camera. I, I can't do it. But at some point, we all have to embrace the suck and know that there may be a field that we, you know, we have to watch. And to this comment of this guy here, um, he said Pro Stock is born. Just imagine Pro Stock with electric engines. I'm done. Dude, I'm breaking in now. I, I, I can't. You can embrace suck where you're at. Down here in the southeast, we don't embrace suck, okay? And I'm just going to tell you, and I'm going to make every one of my PR people cringe. Uh, Elon Warner is probably going, oh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Yes, I'm doing it, okay? Watch an electric Watching electric drag racing is like going to the hotel and having a romantic encounter with a mannequin. That's what it is. That's it. Jeez. You guys will stick me on it? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just going to leave it on you. All these, I don't know, Lee. I mean, every time it seems like we bring up the electric car field, whoever it's on at that time has something to say and they just take it way down that road. So like I, I don't know. Tofu, okay. All right. Try hey. to sell me on tofu. It ain't happening. You can say it's a trend. You can say embrace the suck, but I still ain't trying tofu <laughs> either. Okay. Uh, electric drag racing is the equivalent of tofu. Hey, look, the guys that do this are very smart. They're very intelligent. And I applaud what they've accomplished because what they've accomplished is, is nothing less than an incredible feat. But for me, I ain't into it. It ain't my thing, okay? Just like we're watching RuPaul's Drag Race, it ain't my thing. All right, Bobby. Well, let me say down, we... first before you run me off my show. Well, he can hear you. <laughs> he's he's just I ran just out of coffee. I just want to see his face. <laughs> All right, well, Lee, I guess break us to a commercial. We'll let him say hi. If he stays too long, we'll have to put him in timeout and mute him. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Put the hook on him. Put the hook on him, <laughs> folks. Competition Plus Apparel, Bobby. Real quick, what can you get right now from Competition Plus Apparel? Well, we're uh, already in the pipeline, and I'm going to give you uh, the. Power Hour viewers are getting a uh, uh, getting a clue here. They're getting a, uh, a sneak peek, breaking news. Uh, the 1995 car is uh, headed into production here soon. Uh, we'll have another T-shirt in the Scotty Cannon Heritage Series. Plus, we'll be kicking off the Ed the Ace McCullough Legend Series. Uh, starting with the Miller High, a uh, Miller, Miller uh, car that he ran the 514, that t shirt, and Charles Carpenter. Those are coming on the horizon, so be ready. 
All right, folks, we'll take a quick break. And right after the break, John Force, we will have him on the Competition Plus Power Hour. Get your CompetitionPlus.com apparel today. Whether it's our nitro-burning funny car design or the vibrant door slammer design, we have the swag to show you are always in the know. Get yourself a hat, too. And we know not everyone enjoys wearing a mask, but if you must wear one, at least wear a good-looking one. Check out the new CompetitionPlusApparel.com for the latest from the place where you have trusted for your news on the Internet for over two decades. John Force, welcome once again, sir. <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I here to sell competition plus apparel? How did I get in the middle of this? Bobby, you have I want to know, know where that mannequin, where do you find those mannequins? You going electric drag racing? <laughs> no, pretty, and about electric, let me tell you, one of my prides and love of my life is my electric toaster. And you dare to insult electric? what our whole world thrives on. And we're going on the grid here pretty soon with this new infrastructure bill. Uh, and I don't get into politics, but I'm waiting to see how all this stuff's going to work. It's going to be exciting. But let's don't do politics. Hey, look, look what I'm wearing, John. I'm wearing my Dale Poldy Miller High, High Life Warrior shirt. Let me tell you, those are my heroes. You know, we have the new heroes of today that I race with every week. And and but we have the heroes of the old days, and Ed the Ape or Ed the Ace McCullough, they were my buddies, and uh, they taught me. And uh, 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 the the Miller Light car, I, I remember Hamby and Poldy and them guys. I used to say to my uncle Beebs, "How do they get around the country? They don't have no sponsor money." He said they robbed Seven <laughs> Elevens. <laughs> that wasn't true, but that was that was one of our uh, stories. I can't pretty- believe you called. McCullough, Ed the Ape. Well, that's what they call him. The guy's built like a rock. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and try to fight him, you'd be fighting an ape. Trust me. He, he, he'll whip you on the spot. Uh, he just, uh, uh, he's a real drag racer. Uh, but the one, one person tougher than him uh, was his son's mother. Okay, because I watched <laughs> her punch him out at Bakersfield. Even Ed McCullough got punched out. For whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe I made that up. It seems real to me, though. Well, I'm I'm glad I didn't have to come help you up there uh, with that Hagen fella, boy. He's a pretty big old fella now. I'm telling you, I thought yeah, he, I was gonna have to come up there and help you a little. I bit. I thought he was gonna kiss me. I was struggling to get away. <laughs> well, John, all right, maybe we'll talk you into doing a a, a Wendy's t-shirt that we can sell on competition plus apparel but anyway it's your show uh have a great time thanks so much for all you do for drag racing i don't know what we would have done without you for all these decades uh you are more the a blessing than you know so appreciate it let me tell you something we were at norwalk raceway over the weekend uh night of fire and uh, one of my employees come up to me Great big kid, all muscle, a young kid. The team loves him. And he holds up this T-shirt and it said, uh, the nightmare continues. It was black with my logos and stuff. The nightmare continues. We'd won a championship 100 years ago. And in the middle, it's so tiny. And I said, first of all, where'd you buy it? Number two, why'd you buy it so small? It won't fit you. He said, my parents bought it for me. Uh, You know, uh, when he was like five years old. It was a kid's T-shirt, and he's still at it to this day. Made me. They don't know the things that make me proud, and and he'll get a raise out of this, and he knows it. He probably conned me. But uh, these kids work hard, and a lot of them work for you because they love you, and they, and they come. Their parents watched you, and their grandparents. So, um, okay, let's get on this show. Whose show is this? Well, it's your show now, but I'm checking out. I'll be in Topeka. I'm coming, and I'm bringing hell with me, so I'll be at your pits Friday. Let me tell you something. But I saw some of those. I'm not getting into a bait. Nobody debates Bobby Bennett. You'll get eight alive, and the media will kill you. But I watched uh, Tasca in one of those electric cars. Everybody's building them. You know, it's you know if they can figure out how to build a grid or they can charge them all the time. I can't even keep my phone charged. But um, what I'm saying is, 
um, the world's changing. And I, I'm a dinosaur, Bobby, but but uh, I like the Nitro, the, the NHRA, uh, you know, all of this stuff that we do, drag racing, uh, 10,000 horsepower, 338 miles an hour, nitro belching out the pipes, you know, three second runs. That's what makes me tick. But you, you, you got to look at the world changes and, and, and uh, I'm not ready for change. Don't get me wrong. I love it just the way it is. Uh, but, but it, only a matter of time, but, but at the weight rate I'm going, it won't matter in my lifetime if they have electric cars out there, but there'll always be change. And I ain't saying I'm for it or against it, but there will be change. But one thing I know is true. Bobby Bennett will not change. And that's what I like about you. I, I got news for you, Forrest. I ain't going to love on no mannequin. I ain't going to eat a meatless hamburger. And I ain't going to fall in love with electric drag racing. But when Wendy, wait, wait, Bobby. When Wendy's come out with a square hamburger after a hundred years of round hamburgers, uh, would you eat a square hamburger? Did you think, oh, no, this doesn't. What are we even talking about here, Sarah? If, I don't know what we're doing. If the thing came from a freaking cow, I would. But the other day I heard on the news they were selling a square hot dog. A square <laughs> hot dog. Now, that really did. That was gross. That was gross to me. How do you make a square hot dog? That's called spam. What about those two gentlemen upstairs there? Number uh, 22. Uh, and, their show. I'm checking and, out. And Stevie Wonder over there in his shades on the left there. Where are we going with this power hour? Where, wherever you here, take us can i get Pete in here in blue def and chevrolet and flavor pack and monster energy um uh, uh, okay i got a question for you john what? and i know sarah might get a kick out of this one is it flavor pack and cornwell tools sarah at my age has to yell my sponsors to me so i don't forget <laughs> sarah but, ain't great. but we had a great race in norwalk uh, they packed it and uh and then uh Something happened. I still haven't figured out what happened. They lost power. Talk about power issues. Yeah. Well, they should have rolled all the cars up like a James Dean movie and turn on all the headlights and let's run them. There you know you what go. I mean? But, but I don't make the rules. Uh, the, the Bader family, uh, dad and the son, Bobby, they had their hands full. Uh, and and uh, But we all got out of there safe. And we still put on hair. I made uh, five runs. You know what I mean? I'm only supposed to make two a car, but uh, we, Brit, Brittany and the Monster Energy was in the final. Uh, with Antron, he was low. I was in the final uh, with uh, uh, Cruz Petragon. I uh, I was low. And, and uh, then there was some problems that took place. A truck exploded, a jet truck. Wasn't anybody's fault. Stuff happens. But uh, And then the power grid went off. And it's like, wow, if you'd had an electric car there, you'd been in trouble. You'd still be sitting there. But uh, uh, anyway, the fans still got a great show, a great light show. And Bader, no matter what happens, he puts that show on. And it's the greatest show on earth. So God bless him. And uh, let's see where we go from here. Why did we come on this show today? Why am I here, Sarah? We came to talk wasn't drag race, and that's exactly what you're doing. Wasn't I just on this show here a week ago or two? Why are they get me back so? It's been a couple months. See how time flies when you're drag racing. Where'd, where'd Bobby go over, sit on the couch with that mannequin? That's right. That's yeah, we had to put right him now. in. Put him in timeout. You gotta love him. You gotta love him. So I have a question for you, John, and I know always, Sarah may get a kick out of this. Like it is, whether you like it or not. Yep. So you, know you have a sponsor. Is it Flava Pack? Or is it Flavor Pack? I hear it on TV. It's always Flavor Pack, but Sarah says it's Flavor Pack. We don't like it. We, I mean, we don't care how you pronounce it as long long as you like it. Uh, if uh, it's just potatoes, fruits, vegetables, a little bit of everything, uh, Flavor Pack. But I think it's F L A V. It's shortened. Flav means flavor, but but uh, 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 Frank Teagues owns it. He's out of Washington. Uh, he owns a lot of companies, Montana brand, and uh, them and Monster split the car and uh, with Brittany and uh, uh, with uh, Grubnik. They got a real fast car right now. It's really flying. It, it hasn't won yet, but it's right on the edge. So we'll we'll see we'll we'll see where it goes. Robert Height and the Auto Club. 
Chevrolet, he's always fast. He's in the hunt. And and and, and the old man here, I'm I'm still in the fight. I'm up there somewhere. So uh, bring it on. Topeka, here we come. NHRA Camping World, how's this for plugs? Okay. Well, John, you definitely have brought it on to the competition coming back in 2021. Two wins, your third in points. You've made a couple other final round appearances. So you showed them, hey, you can still get it done out there. And Robert Height's doing well. Uh, Brittany's had some good passes. So talk to me about John Force Racing and the performance so far in 2021 and where you think you're going to wind up by the end of it. Well, Jimmy Prox always fast. Uh, uh, he does a great job. Um, uh, Daniel Hood, that's with Robert's car. And, and uh, uh, Daniel Hood, my son-in-law, Ashley's husband, runs uh, my peak, Blue Death, you know, antifreeze and coolant, uh, motor oils and all, all the brands of Old World Industries. But uh, he's doing a good job, but he's got Fabrizi uh, to back him up at, at car chief. Barlam, uh, who will run our fourth car, uh, if we get it back with with uh, Austin Proc, and I really want it back, I'm putting me a, a marketing team together. Uh, in fact, I think it got closed today. It'll be opening in Indy, I think, around uh, August 1st or something like that. And we're going to chase money. We're going to do B2B business because it's getting tougher out there. And and, and um, we might have to sell multi-sponsors on a car during the year. So, you know, I'm really lucky to have the partners that I have. And uh, we're going to go down the road and uh, just just keep pitching and, and trying to win. But right now, uh, Grubnik, he's always in the hunt, runs low ET almost every weekend and top speed uh, with Brittany and, and uh, just uh, waiting for a win. And I, I, I've got some wins in there and Robert's got some wins. So uh, but the competition, uh, you know, you know, we always say the best we've ever seen it, but it really is good. And we're in the hunt with them. And that's what it's all about. So so. Uh, you know, Parker Store, we're going up to Baldwin Filters uh, with them uh, and, and, and do some shows with them right after Topeka. So I got a, a, a lot of uh, sponsors to take care of. And without them, Chevrolet, we don't exist. That's why I'm on your show to get these plugs in here, not just because I love you guys, but I do. But uh, so let's talk some uh, racing. What was the question? I'm going to be in the hunt. Don't worry about me. Well, you're only 63 points, or no, you're 46 points back right now from the top spot. So how does that feel? You're going in three races left. What is What does that kind of feel for you going into this, knowing, hey, there's a chance of you maybe or, you know, clinching that number one spot? Yeah, but I really don't want to think about it because it's a it's a false illusion that you get mental in it and then you think you've got to deliver. I go drive my race car because I have fun. I love it. I love the, uh, you know, the camaraderie out there, the guys and the gals that we race. Uh, yeah, we'll have our ups and downs and have bad days. That's just part of the business. Hell, I fought with Perdome and Ed McCullough and all these guys for years. And, and it's just part of it. But I really do like driving the car. And if I get into it and it gets into my head, uh, you know, that, well, I need another round here. You know, I was right up second to Tasca. Then I got bumped clear down to fourth. Then I went back up to third or something it doesn't really matter it is what it is what matters get in the countdown and and uh and and then get into the hunt get into the but i don't even want to get mental there if you if you get mental i mean it will screw you all up and you just forget how to drive and you'll throw it all away so work all year keep your focus but not forget why you came you love it and i love it i love being with the fans uh you know, I, I ran home early from work today and spent a couple hours in the gym and I was late getting back here. Uh, thank you for keeping me on your show. Uh, but I love talking to the fans. I love talking to you guys. And uh, I want to hear questions from you guys. Where do, OK, back to you. Where do you want to go? <laughs> well, John, look, you talk about running the car. How good did it feel after 2020 sitting out, being back Southern California, Sonoma and Pomona running in your backyard? with those backyard fans and just enjoying drag racing, man. How good did it feel? Well, it was painful not racing. The pandemic about took me out mentally. It, you know, I'm a kid at heart. And they talk about our kids in school, how, how hard it is on them. And they need to get back. And, and yet, uh, I got through it. I lived in the gym. I did everything to try to keep my mental state. And, 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 
and 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 chase the dream. If you can keep this old man's body, like like Clint Eastwood and Austin Coyle says, don't let the old man in. But the old man is creeping on me right now. But the idea is, if I could stay in the game, and that was the dream for, you know, from August. I mean, from uh, March after Gainesville when we shut it down, uh, you know, and 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 we went to the end of the year, and then it came back. It started this year, and. Uh, Boy, just to be back. So to come back to Pomona, that was a big one. That's my home track. I loved it. It was a heater out there. The hottest I've ever, I think the hottest I've ever raced in maybe a few times in my career. But I mean, it was hot. Drivers were struggling, but I know the drill. You gotta drink water all day. You can't hardly eat any food of anything. A stomach won't take it, especially at my age. But I was in the battle and I got whooped. You know what I mean? Uh, Ron Caps took me off out, went to get his win. Love Ron Caps, uh, excited for him. Uh, Dean Antonelli, those are my friends. As much as I want to win, when it's over for me, you know, I root for the other guy, and and because I like to have fun. I'm, I'm I'm the world's biggest spectator. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, people don't understand that. Like, don't you get tired? How can you get tired when you get in that car and it makes you alive and you feel you're walking around and oh. You wouldn't believe at Norwalk, uh, I'm out there uh, on my scooter and there was a problem and I drove out to the end of the track to watch them run that lane that was burnt up from that jet car and, and they did fix it. And in the middle of it, I'm going down, I got off in the grass and I flipped this bike over and it went airborne and it landed on me and my crew was all standing there. I didn't, uh, you know, I hit the ground hard and and the, the bike landed on top of me and um my crew ran over to get me like are you okay and i said yeah i was embarrassed fans were all cheering they said that was the biggest part of the show and the announcer never even saw it but the, a lot of the fans in the stands did but you know i went down i crashed got up brushed myself off waved to the crowd and went back to work but boy it's taken me about four days to get my body back neck was kinked my ba back was kinked uh, you know, part of life, got to be careful on those motorcycles. So um, uh, anyway, I don't even know why we told that, but it was a great weekend. Even if I did almost never got hurt in the race car, but about killed myself on a motorcycle. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. And John, everybody talks about it. One day you're going to wreck that thing and it's over and done with. And it was done at the biggest show in drag racing. So cool, man. Well, when it's, I always said, I'd, I don't want to go out in a rocking chair. Maybe when I get older, I'll change my mind on that. I've changed my mind on a lot of things, but I'll tell you, uh, I really like racing and it's my home. The tracks are my home. Some I love, some are okay, but, but I love being out there with the people and that's where I want to be. That's where I want to grow old and I'm already growing old, but see the race car doesn't know how old you are. It does the running for you. And that's, what's really cool. Ed, I got to get out there. I got to fight on those Christmas trees to try to beat those guys. I do everything within the rules. I, I make some of them mad sometimes. I don't mean to, but uh, I'm not as good as those kids. I'm admitting it. They got natural reflexes. They got that energy. You know, I got to pound some monster energy when I'm tired to get out there and try to cut those lights. But I've learned how to stay in the game, and I've done it for years because the mongoose, those guys taught it to me coming down the road, how it really works. And all I'm doing is, is I learn from the best and I'll teach the best uh, or the worst. And in time, um, they'll, they'll do it their way, but I'm going to do it mine. All right, John, you mentioned it. So we're going to bring it up shortly after the incident that happened in Pomona with Hagen, I caught this picture of you and I put it up on my social media with the phrase above it. Here, no evil. Um, you know, after watching everything that kind of happened, a lot of people say you double bulbed them on purpose or you did this. But, you know, in each round I watch, you know, you you stage deep and everything like that. So can you just talk about that and explain, like you said, you have to take every advantage that you possibly can? Well, I well, number one, I do take every advantage. The one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be slow on anybody uh, because uh, you know, don't want them to run out of fuel. Me and Bazemore did that at Vegas and we both caught on fire down at the other end. I guess he was told not to stage against me and I was just as thick headed. So I said, well, I won't stage. And we ran out of gas and caused ourselves a bunch of money. But at the end of the day, I race the way I dr drive, the way I'm trained uh, of who I go up against. 
but I know that if I'm a little bit slow and I am, uh, you know, then I say, got to speed up because it's really hot out here. And, and if you go uh, too slow and a guy happens to overheat and runs out of gas, you don't want to hurt nobody. All you want to do is beat him to the other end. And long as you stay within the rules. So there is no rules about double bulbin and all of this. I get the gentleman thing. Uh, you know, I think uh, Hagen, uh, he lost that round. So he was upset. Uh, uh, you know, the camera showed me chasing him. I didn't chase him. He came over to my car, was yelling at me like, what's all this double ball? Well, you know, I had my own daughter say to me once, dad, the guy double balled me. I said, so what? Yeah, but you know, well, learn how to handle it. They can double ball. They might not have done it on purpose. They might have done it on purpose. I actually did it and I ain't making this up. I did it by mistake. I was trying to hurry in so I wouldn't make him set. Even though that morning it wasn't that hot, it had been hot for days. And I was just mentally like, get in there, don't hold him up. And I jumped in and I, I double bulbed it. And let me tell you something, it screwed me up. He had a 50 something light, I had a 110 light. I almost didn't let the clutch out because I said, oh man, I put on both bulbs and this ain't no bullshit, this is the truth. And I looked up his light come on and I thought, oh, get ready, because I got screwed up. And in the middle of it, I said, you didn't even let the clutch out. And I was just dead late. So if anything, I did him a favor. I just got lucky and beat him. I don't know, he, his motor didn't run or something. And that's really what happened. He don't believe it and he never will. He, I heard he wrote big stories on the internet and I can't write those stories or I would, I don't know how to do the internet. But uh, in the middle of it, he's got a right to his opinion. He's a great racer. Uh, they wanted to interview me about it. I said, I'm over it. I want to move on. I'm trying to win a race is what I'm trying to do. As long as I lay within the rules. And the rules are win. And that's what I try to do. And uh, some days it looks like I did it. Some days I did it. Some days I didn't. But I go after everybody. Cruz will leave on me. I go after him. I went after Ron Caps, And Ron Caps you know, said right on TV, I didn't see the interview, but, but I listened to him say it, you know, force put out the top bulb or whatever I did. And he said, it gets him up, makes him excited and he does better. Okay. So everyone's entitled to their opinion. So I'm over it. I'm going to go race at Topeka and I'll do what I always do. And I'll tell you the truth. I don't know what that is. Some days I'm just mentally trying to get to the start line, get my bulbs on, get raised, cut a light, and hope it goes to the other end. That's what I'm all about. So I can win for Peak and Chevrolet and Auto Club and all these people. So that, that's what makes me tick. And uh, there ain't no jive talk here. It's the way it is. And don't care who believes me. I've been doing this for 45 years. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just do what I do. And I'm going to have fun doing it because I love it. And, uh, but I'm definitely not going to let anybody run me out of a sport that I helped build. So, John, as you mentioned, and I'm a proponent of it, like it's within the rules, do whatever you're going to do. It's within the rules, get over it. But it has, has it, have people always been this sensitive as drivers? Because it seems like a rash of it, maybe within the last five years of the gentleman's game down there at the light. So, has it always been that way? Or has it grown worse in the professional categories over time? No, it's always been that way. You know, uh, you know, cars are now are so close together. You know what I mean? And I could get into all, but, but you know what? I can sit here and give you all my reasons that I believe are right. But this is like politics. The other side will believe you're wrong. So I can't win this discussion. Hagen can't win this discussion. I say what I believe and the fans that support me or think like me are like, you're right. The other way they support him. But the bottom line is there is no, Hagen even said it. I didn't break any rules. I didn't do anything wrong. His deal was the gentleman factor. You shouldn't do anything, you know, that goofs the other guy up. But I question that in my whole career, I had guys all the time trying to screw me up. Mongoose came over to me in the final and said, my motor's broke. He said, uh, uh, you're going to win this race. I just want to go up there and get my money. And I said, okay. And I said, okay. He said, so go out there and have some fun. It's your deal. So what did old stupid John Force do? I did a big old burnout because I thought it was awesome. And I backed up and all of a sudden here comes Mongoose doing a burnout. 
I thought, wait a minute, I thought there was something wrong with him. And we go back to the start line and my crew chief says, shut it off at half track. You're going to run out of gas. And, and when I got out the other end, I said, Mongoose, what happened? And he said, just a real good lesson. I said, what? I thought you were my buddy. No, he said, I wanted to win the race. And he said, you know, you were out running me. And so basically, if you're stupid enough, you know, to think I'm broke, then I'm going to go ahead and and that's what happened. Now, that is an extreme lesson, but it happened. You know what I mean? And uh, he got the win, and, and uh, it was a match race at Orange County Raceway in my early days, but it was like, wow, that wasn't very nice of him. His job's a win. No one said he's supposed to be nice, but I also believe you don't want to be bad because we don't we ever want to hurt anybody, and we want the fans to get side-by-side -side racing, and uh, that's really what it's all about. So, I ain't got no answers. I give my opinion. I, uh, maybe some think I'm wrong, and maybe I am, okay? But I know what the rules say. I can do anything I want. I got seven seconds. It's a small ball game, and the other guy can do the same. So, anyway. I love it. I love it. Quarter of the night is I don't care what they believe, John Force, period. Hey, John, got I, another I, question I do, for you. I, I, I do want to say something. In all respect to Hagen, he's a champion. He's a great racer. I know his dad. They're a good family. And, and uh, uh, he carries the emotion. And that's what a great driver has to be the emotion. And, and I like that in him. So I, I got no complaints with him. Um, anyway, um, let's go drag racing, Higgs. That's all I got. Got another question for you, John. What would it mean for you to have, for you to win on the weekend and your daughter to win on the same weekend? Like, what would that mean for you guys? Well, it would mean everything because I love her and her and I, we kind of had to make a little pack in the last couple of weeks because I'm hard to live with. Ashley said it. Brittany said it. Uh, I mean, Courtney said it. Dad, when you were with us on the road, you, you were on kill all the time, you know, and, and, and now the only one there, you know, I call her the, the last samurai, my daughter, Brittany, the last force name in the sport. And, and, and I thought, no, this is the way she's got to learn. She's got to be tough. And, you know, and, you know, Frank Teague's got on me, John, you're too tough on the girl. Uh, you know, he's her sponsor. And, and, and then Grubnik said, you got to give her some space, you know? And, and, and I thought, no, they're wrong. They don't know. And then my grandson, Jacob, said, Dad, Grandpa, he says, Grandpa, and he, he drives a junior dragster, and, and uh, uh, he, he just, him and his brother, uh, Noah, and, and so does Autumn. Uh, Autumn's moving up to uh, uh, Super Comp. She went to Frank Hawley's driving school, so we'll see where that goes. But uh, she got her license. But Jacob said, Grandpa, and he's only, he's not five years old. He's, he's like nine now. And, and, uh, and he said, you're kind of mean to Robert and to Brittany. And I said, what? He goes, yeah, I hear you out there arguing sometimes. I never argue with Robert. Oh, yes, you do. And then, of course, he tells me, but you and I are perfect, Grandpa. But it, it was a real wake up. And I thought, when a little guy sees it at the races, then I must be wrong. And so I went to, 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 um, um, to uh, Brittany. We're sitting in a little diner. I even called Guido, uh, Ron Capps' crew chief, uh, works for Schumacher, and, and his wife, Kelly, works for me. And I said, come on down, we'll have something to eat. So they stopped by, and we're sitting there, and we're talking. And we're just talking shop, because Guido and I go way back when he was a kid, when he started working for me. And in the middle of it, uh, Courtney goes, I mean, Brittany goes, oh my God, dad, look at this. And, and there's Robert and his beautiful bride. They got married in Alaska that day. And it was like, I didn't even know. That's what I like about Robert. Boy, the unknown. Uh, got a beautiful bride. Uh, they, they went to Alaska with the family. I shouldn't be announcing it. I could get in trouble for this, could I? But it's out now, and I saw the picture. I was shocked, but your bride looked beautiful, and, and I was really happy for you. Autumn was there, and, and her son was there. So it was – and, and uh, I wasn't invited, 
but I think I'm going to get you an electric toaster is what I'm going to do because I like toasters. So um, just love you guys and, and uh, just want to wish you well. And congratulations on the marriage. You got a, a wonderful lady. And, and at the end of the day, I got a lesson though in all of this from Jacob. So Brittany and I had a little gathering of how to get along and we had a great weekend and got her to the airport. We got out of the airport and uh, uh, everything's good. And John at 72 years old, I'm trying to learn about, you know, you, you think you got it all right and you realize you're all screwed up. You know what I mean? And I've been hit in the head so many times in these race cars and I've been knocked off bar stools. I've been in fist fights. I've done it all in my day. And, and I've taken too many whacks to the head. At least that's what they told me down there at the Miami Clinical. Son, you've had enough hits. You're already dead and you don't know it. But you know what? I love what I do and I'm going to keep doing it. And thank you for, I got into a medical thing here. Where am I going? My sponsors will all quit me. They think I'm nuts, but I'm not. It's, it's part of who I am and I just keep doing it because I love it. Well, John, look, talking about you loving it and with having you on tonight, I wanted last time to ask this, but we didn't get to it. So I was at the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame dinner, and one of the inductees this year in 2021 was a John Stomper Winterburn, uh, the great Australian drag racer promoter. And Gary Densham did the inducting, and he mentioned that he kept Gary from killing you while you all were down in Australia. I want to hear about Australia from you. Why'd you go there? What happened? And have you ever been back since? No, they, we talk a lot about a, a tour one day, even taking Ashley back with me or Courtney. Maybe the whole gang, depends on how many teams I've got. But that uh, was 1974, the movie Jaws came out in E.T. And I went down to Australia and at uh, in Adelaide, I saw... I saw a, a great white that could swallow. Uh, I'm with Chevy now, so I'll just say a, a small Chevy, okay? But it was unbelievable. But Gary Dincham, I went down there. I didn't even know how to race. I had raced, you know, fuel allards a little bit. I had a front engine dragster. Nobody knew who I was. But I, 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 I bought the, uh, the L.A. Hooker funny car from the Beavers and the Condits. And uh, I was sponsored by Wally Thor's School of Trucking. Uh, I was teaching truck drivers how to drive, and and I went uh, down to Australia. I was only 24 years old and never been on an airplane. I was terrified to get on an airplane, and I got down there and I did everything wrong you could do. Blew up all my motors, and the night after the uh, Surfers Paradise, the first race, on the last run, my the first run it shut off on the burnout. Second run I got over in the grass or something. I don't even know if they had guardrails, and on the Third run, I went off the end of the track and I was out in the cow field. This really happened. I remember seeing two eyes. I thought it was aliens. I thought I told you this story before. And anyway, when I got back, the, the promoter, he's like, you're terrible. You don't, I find out you don't even have a license. I didn't even got my license back from NHRA yet that I had applied for at Orange County. And in the middle of it, uh, Shooter Doug was, was a guy that was my crew chief. He was six foot six. He's a big man. And he grabbed me by the neck. I told him, you're not any good either. And, I'm, and I stink too. And, and in the middle of it, on that run with my high gear car, I ran uh, the quickest ever in Australia by pure fluke. And, and uh, the next day, Stomper beat on my door. That's back there. All I ever drank was Coke and milk. And they don't have refrigeration. So I ended up learning how to drink beer. And I did that for 40 years. So I quit now. But in the middle of it, Stomper goes, holds up the Sydney newspaper. You're the fastest man in Australia or the quickest. I don't know which it was, <clears throat> but I still have the magazine. I wish I had it here to show you. I got it. I, I kept 50 of them. But in the middle of it, uh, Dave Harding that owned all the circuses and the, and the Ample series, he said, I'm going to bring you back, and, but I'm going to call Sid Waterman. And they got me some engines and, and um, some motors. Uh, for us to uh, to race with. And the rest of the tour, I never did anything, but uh, Gary Dincham was a great guy. I loved him, and he, he always took care of us. And that's why later when I had a chance, I hired him to drive for me. And, and you know, he won the big bud shootout. He won Indy. Uh, he was winning races. So, uh, you know, Gary Dincham and his boy now, they're still racing. So real, real drag racers. 
they're the real deal. So to have them out there at the Camping World Show at Pomona, they love Pomona, and have them part of it, and 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 and, and to be there with them. Uh, but Gary got me through Australia, and I heard Stomper got the award. Congratulations! But he had passed away just before that weekend. That's why Gary went to get inducted. So uh, God bless him. Uh, he helped my career with that newspaper article. Final question here for you, John, is you there is a yet? big, no, never. There is a big peak promotion you guys got going on right now. Peak is doing something really cool. So can you tell us about that promotion before we let you go? Well, we got all kinds of promotions going. You look at my car here, uh, the blue Def car peak. Uh, we just gave away a new Chevrolet pickup truck uh, a few weeks ago. In fact, the guy showed up. Uh, that that it, another guy showed up with a car that he designed for me, the one with the American flag. Uh, he had won a, a weekend at the races. But I, I think the promotion right now is we're, we're allowing you to have your name on the hood of this car, and I'll put you out there at 330 miles an hour, and I'm going to win some more races. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish. And it's where you can sign up, go online. Uh, you have it. Am I saying it right, Sarah? Yeah, comments on the social media post on Peak. Hey, I got it right, though. It's to put their name on the hood. And we're going to run it at the World Finals. Thank you, dear. This is my uh, right arm here. Sarah runs everything because my brain is about to quit. But I'm excited about it. She works every show. She's down here late. And I said, couldn't we get a morning show? But even her, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make her take tomorrow off so she can have a day off because she's always down here making sure we get the exposure. But uh, Peak, we keep doing promotions with Blue Death. Uh, we do them with the antifreeze and coolants, and we do it with their motor oils. It's a great company. I love it. Uh, Tom Hervis, my personal friend, um, you know, he's my age, and he, he's got more fire than you can imagine than me and my whole race team put together. Uh, but uh, uh, we're continually uh, doing promotions. Um, my guy in, at Peak, um, we continually keep building promotions. We're filming here least almost every week, huh? Yeah. So uh, we're excited about it and uh, still bringing the fans more to build our brand, to build all the sponsors' brands, but um, also just to um, um, do something good for the fans. That, that's, uh, that's, you know, uh, there's a company called Burl Max that makes um, um, these little electric engine motorbikes and maybe that's why I was so protective with Bobby Bennett over at Electric. But uh, I got one for Jacob and I got one for Noah. And, and I called, uh, I won't get into all of it, but Burl Max makes these bikes and I'm getting a bigger bike. And, uh, but I didn't crash on it. I want to clarify that. I wasn't on my Burl Max. And, uh, uh, but, but they make great stuff. They're out of, I think, think Missouri, but I've seen them at the Indy track. But I uh, just want to thank you guys because everything about my grandchildren, I just totally love. And when I see them having fun, uh, we, you know, we go to the races, uh, Robert's out there in Daniel Hood with their Jayco trailers and the kids all got their Burrow Maxes and uh, grandpa's doing his job. So I'm going to stick around. I'm going to build me a team. I'm going to announce here in a few weeks to find money and do B2B. And I'm going to grow John Force Racing. I'm going to get my fourth car back and I'm going to get two more cars, another funny car and another dragster. And that's what I ought to have been saying all along instead of getting mental that the cup's half empty. The cup is half full. So everybody out there, I don't want to hear about your age. Get off that couch, get up, go to work. Policemen, firemen, the first responders, are the military, they're giving their lives every day for you. So don't sit there and just grow old. It's a waste. And I'm not going to allow it to happen to me. And one day I'll just tip over and so be it. But I'm going to keep preaching the gospel because I really do love NHRA. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying everything's perfect, but they gave me this life and I'm going to ride this thing to the very end. John, it's an honor. Thank you for what you've done for drag racing. Thank you for being on this show. And personally, thank you for wearing your shades during the good bit of it. Hey, yeah. you, you got on them super. Are you Amish with that big old red beard? <laughs> <laughs> you no, and your no, but I have been in love Amish country. I, I love you guys what you do because you're letting us, you let me talk for an hour and you'll probably have to cut half of it. But I, I appreciate that you take your time to build it and uh, keep bringing me back. And I'll keep trying to give you some excitement, but I love it. 
and uh, I did not crash on on my on my uh, Bromax. Bromax. What? I didn't crash on that. I want to make that clear. God bless you. Love your show, Bobby Bennett. Electric cars. The dinosaurs are gone, and it'll be what it'll be, and we can't control it. All we can do is keep fighting and preaching the gospel. And uh, the rodeos are still around. Cowboys are still around. Drag racing and nitromethane will be around a long time. And you can take that to the bank. There you go. That's we fine. appreciate it, John. Thank you, Sarah, for keeping us on our toes. And thank you. We will see you guys at a racetrack very, very soon. Sarah, the most beautiful girl <laughs> in the world, makes all this happen for me on a weekly basis. And uh, uh, um, Elon Warner, I love you, Elon. I want to tell you that. Miss you, but this girl here, you said she was great. She does a great job. She is Good night. Great. Thank you, John. Man, what a show. I mean, from Bobby talking about his doll again and then just everything. Electric cars. We've got John on. But boom, at the end of the show, right before he goes off, drops a bomb on everyone. Letting us know JFR is on the move on the rise. We are coming at you is basically what he just told us. Lee, what do you think about that? I mean, I at the end of the say, show, saves, yeah, say saves it all look, for the end. The, the energy at John's age, whether it's through coffee, monster, or whatever else it is, or natural, you got to love it. It is contagious. No, the NHRA is not dead. No, nitro is not dead. What a great analogy that he gave us. There's some wisdom in this interview with John tonight. Everybody's like, oh, it's all excitement. No, there was some wisdom in this interview. He's like, hey, we still have cowboys and rodeos around. Like, there's no reason to do that anymore. They're doing it for the sheer, I I'm a man. I can ride that bull for eight seconds. Hey, to have, I'm, I mean, I'm drinking one of these right now, and this is a plug, you know, Monster Energy. Call us, Lee or I, we'll appreciate it. But, right. You know, I mean, I would literally have to drink like one of those and coffee. And anyone knows me, coffee and I don't get along. Like I will be a chipmunk running around, bouncing off everything. But, you know, people are in the comments. Oh, John goes on this. John goes on that. He goes on these rants or whatever. But John is and like he said it. I'm who I am. I'm going to run the races I've ran. I'm going to do it the way I, you know, was taught the way I was, you know, brought up in all this. So. I mean, you can say what you want, but like you said, Lee, he's dropping knowledge. He's dropping information. He has these analogies because he's seen it all. You know, it's it's no From it's no Austin, different than Indiana. He's been on fire. Ex but this is the thing: it's no different than going down to your local diner and asking someone that's lived in your hometown for 70, 80 years, right? They know everything that's happened. He's been involved in this sport. He's grown this sport. The sport yes. was lifted and raised on his shoulders. Yes. So, yeah, say what you want. But, I mean, like you said, Dude. and like you said, everywhere else, I'm John Forrest, and I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And he can. He can. When you're the GOAT, you can uh, go onto any field and eat, I guess, if you want to. Now, but he, that lesson, dude, that lesson he got from the mongoose. Wow. Talk about some head games there. Man, I don't know if that would fly in modern drag racing. Someone would be talking to Glenn Cromwell. Oh, he said this, and he actually did that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you got to think about it. He said it, though. And if you look back to last weekend, Jeff Arin mentioned it. I'd play the game. You have seven seconds. John said it. You have second, seven seconds. Do what you want. You know, and he's right with the reaction times that we saw there. It threw him for a loop. There's no reason why he's in a, you know, a team reaction time like that. I mean, you know, it's all fun game until someone gets hurt, till someone loses, however you want to look at it. I mean, at this point in the season, stakes are high. Every win, every round matters. I mean, yes, simple as that. So you, you're going to do what you want to do. And, you know, it's, it's all a game at the end of it. Like you said, we're all there to get the W. That's right. That's right. And, well, look, I mean, we got about 10 minutes till 1030. Let's talk a little bit more drag racing, man, then close out the show. So let's talk some no prep. I want to talk no prep, man. Let's talk no prep. No prep. But then I want to talk about 
I want to talk about fans, but I want to talk about no prep. So it's kind of weird, but I'm going to bring this up, Lee. So a driver got into an accident last weekend or this past weekend, and his wife started a GoFundMe kind of just to help out with the accident, with the cars. People went through his personal stuff, send horrible messages to his wife, basically who's trying to do, you know, something nice, uh, you know, help out someone else. And they're like, oh, this guy owns a plane. Why do we need to help him? Or this guy owns this. Like, how petty are we? You know, you mentioned it just now with saying, oh, someone would run to, you know, Glenn Cromwell and say, well, they said this. and they Like, how petty are we? Like, we're supposed to be a racing community. We're supposed to help each other out. That's what it's all about. But because someone owns a plane, what makes them or what puts them in a different financial situation? I mean, if you wreck a car, you lose a car, you're in an injury. Why not be caring? Why does it matter what's in their garage? Like, honestly, and, and I'm just going to say this, you know, because I was going to talk about it, but get over it. J like, because I have three vehicles and a race car in my garage, and you have one vehicle in your garage, why does that matter? At the end of the day, I'm a human being. Whether it doesn't matter. Like, just, just because you live in one area and someone else lives in another area, they may have worked harder. Maybe it was given to them, but it doesn't matter. Stop judging them by that. That's all I'm going to say. Race community, stick together. Let's stop all this craziness and this nonsense. I mean, it's, it's mind blowing that we're judging someone because they own an airplane. It's not that hard to care no matter what possessions people might have. I remember Mark Caruso's wreck in Darlington. I was there filming. I filmed it. And, you know, Mark hadn't been that long off of his major wreck that he had at Bristol in the Pro Mod where just completely destroyed the car and messed his back up. He's still trying to get his back worked out. And I called Mark, and knowing Mark personally, he was nice enough to give me an interview. And I said, Mark, look, I don't want to just do this interview and have the video and it just be a piece on the wreck. Make sure at the end I'm going to ask you, give a plug on how to buy some T-shirts from you and maybe that can help out. I've got a small channel, I've got a small platform, but let me help whatever way I can. Does Mark own a plane? Yes. Does Mark have a successful business? Yes. Has Mark done very well in life? Yes. And because of all that, I shouldn't uh, slight him and say, oh, he's got it handled. No, the man needs help. No matter where he is on the social or monetary scale, we all need help from time to time. And I don't even have a garage, by the way, Sam. No, and I mean, you know, it, and you, you touched on it. Mark Caruso is, you know, a great friend of ours. Um, and we can, you know, use him as a perfectly great example. I mean, but, you know, some people may say, well, he was given everything. Well, you can say that, but he still works. He still shows up to work. I mean, if you call him during the week, I guarantee you he's sitting at the desk. And if not, if he doesn't answer, yeah, he's probably in the air. Yeah, so that's his passion. Stevie Fast Jackson on, has a plane. Like, why does it matter? It doesn't, like, the stuff that we look at in today's society, everyone is entitled to their opinion. Just like I'm in, entitled to my opinion about electric cars. I mean, embrace the suck. Yeah, it's going to happen. We're going to see it, whatever. But, like, it is what it is. I mean, you know, someone said it right here. Some people can be heartless. And I, and I think we all do that. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, talking more racing, talking more stuff. Um, you know, it was brought up about pro stock as a boring class right now. And <laughs> I have to laugh at that. Like, whoever the person was, I forget the comment. And then, again, guys and girls out there, these are just our opinions. So this is my opinion. Don't get mad. If you think pro stock is boring, I don't think you're watching the same stuff I'm watching. I mean, the KB and the elite battle, the duel, don't put me on single cam, Lee, because we're, we're going to debate this one right here. The, the KB versus elite duel that's going on, the battle, is entertaining within itself. Which KB car is it going to be this week? Which elite car is it going to be this week? When you have Erica Enders and Aaron Stanfield in the same race, which one is going to take it? But you can't count. Out. And so then when you go over to the KB side, you can't count out Dallas Glenn. You can't count out uh, Kyle. I mean, you know, you know, Greg's going to do great. So to say that pro stock is boring. Okay. 
we can switch it up. Would I like to see some of the cars from PDRA, some of those guys and girls come over and do it? I mean, it might switch things up. Somebody give them a ride. Guarantee you'd be fun. But if you think Pro Stock's boring right now, I think you and I are on a different channel. You must be watching in standard definition because in high definition, I think it is a great battle week in and week out. If you think Pro Stock is boring, I would like to go back to 2019, the NHRA Finals. Greg Anderson has stacked the deck to try to knock out Erica Enders round one by qualifying 15th, and she was second. The energy, you could feel the energy in the stands on how serious that moment was. And, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see Pro Stock as boring. Now, are there things in the class I would like to see? Yeah, I would love to see more manufacturers represented, but that's a bigger problem than NHRA, actually. I would love to see more stock-appearing bodies, but we're not going to get there anytime soon, sadly. But the racing itself is some of the tightest racing, and what a driver has got to do to get to the line first the process of the burnout. The burnout's challenging. Look, Jay Leno, a car guy, tried to do a burnout in Mark Powick's Pro Stocker years ago in the early 90s. He couldn't do it. He could not do it. It is challenging to do a burnout. It is challenging to hold that car at the line. It's challenging to leave right. And not only do you get to leave right, but you still shift the thing. You got, not only is it a reaction time at the tree, it's a reaction time Every step down the track, shifting that car. The, it's highly competitive. It is, to me, a driver's class. And I think people who don't appreciate pro stock, they just don't appreciate what a human's got to do in racing. Now, Sam, now, Sam, I will say uh -oh, this. There is go. the direct opposite. There are those that say, oh, well, Nitro's just nothing but nothing but a bunch of oil leakers and they just mess up the track and there's only one car that goes down the track most of the time anyway, that just blows my mind. Like, no, I've seen some of the most competitive nitro racing I have ever seen here recently. That final at the Southern Nationals, that flag I got behind me between Tasca and John Forrest, epic. It was so close to the stripe. And there has been that great nitro racing this entire year. It's been spectacular. I wonder at times if people are actually drag racing fans or they're just fans of their own opinion and spatting their spat. Hey, hey, whoa there. Don't say that because we're fans of our own opinion too. But we also do like drag racing. So, yeah, I don't know. Right. And, and I agree, Stan. Uh, I'm going to give him a name. He is now the resident. Um, which side are we supposed to be on, guy? Because every week he's the first one to comment that says, hey, you guys are on the wrong side. But he just says the cars are boring, uh, you yeah, know, I in pro stock. And I get that. Yes, I get I think that. that's more accurate. I think that is more accurate. The racing is exciting, and it should be appreciated. I agree. The cars are boring. <laughs> I've got a whole video on my channel, Will NHRA Pro Stock Survive? And I give some points of what I would like to see pro stock become. And number one, I want to see them look more stock. And it can be done, Sam. Talk about the no prep world. Those cars look like the cars that they're supposed to resemble. For example, the car that Lizzie Musi was racing, which now is racing again after her wreck at Darlington, man, that's a Camaro. That is a Camaro. It looks like it should. It can be done. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Pro Stock is the, for the normal bracket racer that wants to go NHRA racing or anyone that wants to. I mean, that is kind of the remote class of the easiest one to get in, you know what I mean, uh, get into. But are we going to see, and I'm, I'm going to revert to this, but are we going to see a Fox Body Mustang? No. Are you going to see that? No. I mean, you're not going to. Are you going to see the new Corvette body style on one. No, you can see the new Mustang body style kind. I mean, they're all kind of starting to look exactly the same in my eyes, but you know, I mean, are you going to see it? No, but I get what you're saying. 
yes, we would like to see those cars look more like traditional cars. Yes. But and, Sam, in the way of aerodynamics. You the Mustang. Brown sugar. Brown sugar in the PDRA. It's a pro street car. Beautiful Mustang. Guy built it in his, his garage. One of the top performing yep. cars in that class in PDRA. It is the car. It looks exactly like a, a, model, a late model Mustang, how it should. You know, one of the issues right now, and it lends this to the funny car class as well, it's the competitors. They want to go as fast as they can. Yeah, and, they and that's what I was that getting edge. at. Aerodynamics is a key, and, and, you know, and here we go again, reverting back to what John said. Everyone wants to go faster. The aerodynamics, I mean, Bobby said it too. When we, when we said he doesn't like the sleek aerodynamic look, he wish we go back. But, again, here goes, Lee. Embracing the suck. It is what it is, right? Everyone wants to go faster. No one wants to go slower. So aerodynamic is the key. You know, we look at all this technology that we have, that we've grown into. So we continue to go that way. And, hey, I get it. Do we... Do we take steps back as an organization, as a racing community? No. Would we like to sometimes? Yeah. I mean, would we all like to in life? I mean, here's a life lesson. Have you ever learned anything when you're like, man, I sure do. If I could go back a few years, I'd totally do it all over again, right? But looking at it going forward, I mean, hey, maybe someone like yourself with the slick glasses, you know, Amish personality like you got, maybe... One day when you make it up the ranks in NHRA and you're calling the shots, then maybe, hey, we might go back to that way. But for right now, it is what it is. That is true. And again, for those who you know make the statement, pro stock is boring or nitro racing is boring or whatever, I don't understand that statement. I can understand the car. I can understand that. But the racing itself is a strong statement. It's, I think it's overstepping. Sam, of the racing, we have the Menards NHRA Nationals presented by Pet Armor this weekend. My picks, Top Fuel, Billy Torrance, oh, Stock, we didn't Anderson, even and Funny Car. Wait, Ron wait, 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 picks. Bobby, if you're out there, Bobby, you're out there. Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. Bobby Bennett, we need your picks. All right, so who do you got? We're going top fuel. Yep. Billy Torres. Who you got? Billy. Okay. Uh, funny car. Ron Caps. Ooh, they're Ron. Okay. What's the next class you want to go to? Pro Stock. Greg Anderson will get it done and then fully bust everything out in Brainerd, Minnesota. I'm giving you two. Back to back. Hey, 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 don't you do that. I'm just saying, don't do that because that was my. All right. Um, what other class? Bikes. They are not running this weekend from what I saw on the entry list. No pro stock motorcycle. Okay. So you got pro stock, funny car, and top fuel. Yes, those are the professional categories for the weekend. Okay. So I got to give you my picks. Yes. Actually, I want a fan. We need someone in the comments to yes, get in on Yes, we need fans. That. Chime in. Your picks this yes, weekend. Yes, we need your picks I mean, for this me, weekend. Give me NHRA and then give me your PDRA picks. Pro Nitrous, Pro Boost, and Extreme Pro Stock. Oh, here's one. Scott, he's saying Frank. Steve Torrance, Hagen, and Greg Anderson. I got uh, Frank. Top Fuel. Uh, I, I got I'm, you know what? Dan. Dan, these are not the Pit Viper predictions. I have class. These are the Oakley Sutros predictions. Yeah, come on, man. Until he grows that mullet, he can't wear Pit Vipers. Right. right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Ella says John Ford. Um, I think that's a good pick. No. Um, okay. I'm going to go with the homeboy. Top fuel. Can I pick two? <laughs> no. No. The no. only place we can pick two is in Pro Nitrous because Jim Halsey's probably going to win and it's just no fun to pick Jim. That's, yeah, like, all right, so top fuel, I'm going my boy, my brother from another mother. 
I know what you're thinking, but I'm not picking him. I'm going Justin Ashley. Oh, comeback. I'm, 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 the comeback, and I, for, trust me, I'm going the comeback right here. I like that pick. I like the Clay Milliken pick. Um, funny car, I'm going J.R. Todd. Okay. And Ashley Pro Stock. Todd. Dude, it's hard not to go with Stanfield. Kid's hot right now. It is hard. He is, he is hot. You know what? I'm doing this. Troy Coughlin Jr. You want to know why? I'm keeping it all J's. Okay? I'm going Justin, Jr. and the Junior. Let's go. Let's Boom. go. Hey, look what Bart Team chimes in with. A just, female sweep. Force DeJoria and Erica Enders. Hey, you know what? Hey, if if we get a female sweep, huh? Would that be? Would that be no, no, no. This is when you need like Darren. He has all those facts. I but I think if you do have a female sweep, including Pro Stock, it will be the first time that there have been three female winners. There have okay. been two in one event. Yeah. But I do not believe yep. there has been three. I like these picks, though. I mean, yeah, great picks. I love them. I love them. I, I, love I them. like them. You guys are good. You know, Lee, hey, Lee. Matt, I like it. I, I think we should start like a fantasy league. Can we do that? Can we get DraftKings as a major sponsor of this show and start our own like betting? thing can we is that like possible does someone have someone out there there's someone in this racing community that's got to have a plug or connection with DraftKings. and if you do email me facebook me facebook that guy this way facebook him let us know this way boom let us know if you have a connection with DraftKings so we can get like a site going and we can all put our picks in, you know, a couple of dollars. And hey, there you go. We need DraftKings as a sponsor of this show. So Ashley, no, you're going too fast. Slow down. Top Fuel 173 said Justin Ashley, Ron Clatt, and Dallas Glenn. I, you know, what? Yep, I like it. This is my thing with Justin. After last week, or not last week, but, you know, the comeback stories are always great. But this is not just a comeback story because of what happened. That Davis team has been putting the work in. If, Like I said, I've got some clips and some videos that I'm going to be dropping of them. Um, I'm dropping a new video here tonight, actually. Um, don't even know what time it is. Yeah, it's still, still a little early. But, you know, it's if you ever watch these teams, go and just sit there and watch these. I don't want to call them smaller teams, but these family group teams that work together so good in the pits and everything. But I don't want to call it a comeback because – he was there. I mean, through the situation, he was there. But I'm just saying, like, it's, it's their time. They deserve it. I mean, they've been working hard for it, right. just like Leah. She deserved, you know, a win. Like, I mean, you know, everyone talks about, oh, I'm on top. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But at some point, you know, your hard work, your weekends at the shop and, you know, all, all that stuff just, I mean, it pays off. We got some uh, PDRA Adam picks Dobbs, coming in, too. Adam Dobbs, uh, Competition Plus photographer, says Pruitt, Hagen, Stanfield. Solid picks right there for sure. And, man, look. You, won't, I, you won't see that. Adam, telling you right now, mark my words, and we can put a $2.50 bet on this because that's probably what it costs to get a Gatorade at the racetrack. Probably five bucks. But. I don't think we'll ever see a back to back like that. I just, I just don't. There's just no. I could be wrong. Hopefully, I'm not. We had one. Fan, but if we see a, uh, oh, here we go. I found it. I found it. I found it, Sam. Eric uh -oh. Dallas Glenn, John Four, solid picks, but goes with Doug Coletta. I would like to see that. They have been struggling, dude. Dude. Like, I'm telling you, if we we could seriously have a solid betting group going on with this. DraftKings. At least fantasy. Someone least out there. Happen. Drag racing fantasy. Someone out there. 
Yes. Hey, Focus very quickly, Let let's know. take a shift to PDRA. PDRA okay. Northern Nationals, first time going to the famed Maple Grove Raceway there in Redding, Pennsylvania. And I'm going to find Stan. Stan mentioned, oh, uh, let me find it. The Pumpkin. Stan, I think that's a good fit, good pick. Jay Cox, the other first time event in the season going to Kentucky, also Norwalk. But Jay Cox did win that race in Kentucky. I think that's a good pick. And also, it's a different pick than Jim Halsey. If I got to be honest, Sam, you got to go with Jim Halsey. But Dude. I, for for flavor's sake, I'm going to pick Weatherford, Randy Weatherford. No. Yeah. You can't go against the champ. Like, like I said in my video that I posted on my YouTube channel, I love performance TNT. Go and check it out. Don't bet against red in vegas don't bet against him he's in a class of his own so who's your other first pick <laughs> i mean right. let's go right i mean as much as we all hate tom brady but i mean the guy is good yeah you can't make kool-aid without sugar and water okay and that man's got a lot of sugar and a lot of water and he keeps goddamn winning so there it is you're right. Hey, Scott, I love I like his picks. Tuttero, Halsey, and Voss in the 632 class. Scott, chime in with that. Chime in with that extreme pro stock pick. Hey, Sam, the Voss boys. The that's, all right. I don't know. I I don't I I don't dude. I don't know. I really don't know. Like, it's if you honestly ask pick. me, if you ask me PDRA picks, it's so hard because there's Dude. so many people that are like, it's it's like pro stock. There's so many people that are just right there. They're, they're, they're there. I can't pick. I, I won't give you PDRA picks. I will leave that to the, um, the Caruso show, and I will leave that to the great Nate. Nitro Nate from Drag Illustrated, the editor in chief. Maybe one day we should get him on here to give us his picks, hey, even though he's on the Caruso that. show. Do that. But, but, but Sam, I don't mind giving the picks because I'm there. I'm going to be there this weekend. I'm there for the PDRA. Okay. And it's the home national event or PDRA event for Kurt Stedding. He is my pro boost pick. The knee is going to be 100% and he's going to win it. You, you know, Lee, I've noticed that about you. I've noticed that I'm catching on to your trends. You pick the local homeboy to the track. Like you think you've noticed that you're like, hey man, there's got some relation. He's good on there's you know, some, he knows how that track man. motivation. Like if you got I'm telling you guys, you gotta watch Lee. Lee is like, okay, well, he only lives seventy five miles away from this track. So hmm. Hey, there is power sleeping <laughs> in your own bed. Put it that way. That is I like true. I mean, we saw that down. We saw that down in Denver, you know. So, I mean, very, very true. We saw that in the top field class down in Denver. I mean, yes. yes. I don't know. I, all right. I'm, I'm not going to pick PDRA because I don't want yeah. anyone. I don't need any Caruso, Placino, any of them. I don't even need the limo guy calling me and saying, hey, man, that was the wrong pick. Just saying. <laughs> Hey, they get touchy. They get a little touchy. It's not like NHRA. They I do, get a little touchy. They I touch do you out, you know? Exactly. Yeah. See, like NHRA, you could give your picks and it's like, eh, whatever. Right? Antron may, may text and be like, hey, what's up? You didn't you didn't pick me? Give me a little grief. But nah, you don't you don't say the right name for PDRA? Whew. Your phone will be blowing up tomorrow morning. That's right. That's so right. or or put or you know, Johnny will be here in the comments here in a few seconds. Yeah, he will be, so. yes, yes. Top Fuel 173, Halsey, Johnny, and King Tut. So I've gave Pro Nitrous, Pro Boost, my extreme pro stock. Scott says JR Carr, good pick. I'm not going JR Carr. I'm not going Johnny Placino. Chris Powers gets it done, shakes out all the bugs in the brand new car, and establishes a stranglehold on the points lead. 632, Wes, just a Wes DiStefano. Good pick there, but I, I think you're a little bold there. How I know, can you I'm not? Gonna hear it on John. I'm going to hear it from Johnny. 
how can you not go against you're going against the homeboy pistachio as i call him johnny well, pistachio you know, talking about home chris powers is literally only like 70 miles away from ready well Green. see you guys proven right there you say, well it's, you know technically you know he's 65 and a half miles away he knows these things um i don't know hey those are your picks like i said my i don't picks. need my phone blowing up they're on the show hey i, I put it i don't if johnny goes out and win wins this was the motivation i gave him motivation to win because i did not pick him i'm just calling it now Johnny, he's calling you out. I hope you're watching. <laughs> I hey, hope man. you are watching. Exactly. Man, Mopar Man says it best right here. So you're making friends. Not. Yeah. I, hey, hey, I make, I make friends all the time. I make friends all the time. I do want to say that, uh, to Terry Craft, that's mom. Hi, mom. Thanks for watching. And Sam, look, love you, brother. Good show. I'm done. Made my picks. Said my piece. Take it away. We still haven't. We still haven't got boss man's pick. So again, this is your final call. Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. Oh, that's another person we need to have on the show. Alan Reinhardt. Yeah. Attention in the pits. Alan, if you're watching, if you do watch, if you've ever seen this show before, let us know. Love to have you on. But Lee, Monday Morning Racer, you guys go over, follow him. He's got a show called Between the Slicks where he talks everything he calls it the most diverse racing show he has the most diverse racing platform so please go over like his facebook his instagram and his youtube channel please give him a thumbs up subscribe to his channel me slam and sam i'm on facebook under slam and sam i kind of give you a variety of what i do twitter slam and sam but everything else i'm under outlaw performance ent please go over to youtube facebook instagram give me a thumbs up subscribe to the videos that we will be dropping one with flying ryan here tonight but it's been a great show we had bobby bennett on came to yak it up with us about his thoughts and what he would be doing if we went to electric cars which no one wants to imagine what that would be but he told us anyway we had john force on here yakking it up about everything hey go over and like jfr sarah's doing a phenomenal job with their marketing um and the chance to get your name on that hood so you know, it, it's been a great show. It's been a fun show. This is the Power Hour. We talk about everything motorsports. We talk about everything drag racing. So every Tuesday, you know where to find myself and the Amish Stevie Wonder, as Mr. John Forrest calls him. But you guys out there, again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please email us, powerhourcp at gmail.com. We do read those. We will respond, and we try to answer all your questions. You can listen back on YouTube and all the major platforms to Bobby Bennett, to Elon Warner, to Lee, to Jeff Aran. Get well soon. Me, I am Slamming Sam. This has been another episode of the Power Hour brought to you by Competition Plus, where you can believe what you read online and what you hear because we say it all. Thank you. God bless and stay safe. In the words of the great John Force, believe what you want to believe. I'm going to do what I want. Signing out. Good night. In the race for quality, there is no finish line. Jerry Bickle Race Cars is a one-stop chassis shop for drag racing performance parts and race components. For over 50 years, Jerry Bickle Race Cars has been an essential part of racers' plans for building world champion race cars. Our parts department is stocked with every part a racer might need. Log on to jerrybickle.com for more information. We build anything with doors. jerrybickle.com.